people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to another FNAF News video. In today's video we have the reveal of the 10th anniversary interactive novel which releases for free. YouTube has revealed a whole bunch of new plushies and figures. SeaWorld Studios has officially announced their presence at PAX West and what you can expect for that. So all that and so much more we're going to be talking about in today's video. So if you're excited for the upcoming 10th anniversary of FNAF because... It's coming up! We got like one week left until the start of August, so subscribe because we're trying to get 100,000 subscribers before FNAF's 10th anniversary. But with all this anniversary talk actually on August the 3rd, we are set to get VIP, a free interactive novel from Scholastic. This is set to be Volume 0 in their brand new interactive novel series. Previously, we took a look at Volumes 1 and 2 the week before and Return to the Pit. And the other day, the official description for VIP was released, just in time for the 10th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's. Head to the Pizzaplex in this interactive novel in which you decide what happens. Get ready for an all new Five Nights at Freddy's experience. You, the reader, are Devin, and you've won VIP passes to the hottest places in town, Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. These all-you-can-eat, all-expenses-paid tickets are guided by digital companion, Very Informative Pig, and are every kid's dream. But does your VIP host have something more sinister in mind. With multiple endings and two difficulty settings, this one-of-a-kind free ebook is a uniquely entertaining experience for any Freddy fan and a perfect way to get ready for the September 2024 launch of Interactive Novel the week before. So interestingly enough, we're actually going back to the Mega Pizzaplex and we also have a very informative pig guiding us through the attractions. And if you remember, we have something very similar to that already in Ruin in the form of Helpy. At least, that's what we all thought. Because a few days later, this cover was released for VIP, and that is not healthy. As surprising as this new pig character is, honestly, I'm kind of digging his design. Like the description said, this is going to be releasing for free as a digital book on August the 3rd. So I'm very intrigued to see what this pig's deal is, why we're back at the Pizzaplex, and of course, because it is free... I guess I kind of have no excuse not to read it, so probably expect a video on this book when it releases. But now moving on, you may remember last FNAF News video we talked about a Freddy Fazbear Bear Bricks figure. Well, it has officially been released, and it seems like there's actually a Chase secret variant of the Freddy figure that actually swaps out the design of Freddy for Withered Golden Freddy from FNAF 2. And now moving on to Hex, they have finally released their long-awaited Springtrap plushie. He's available to pre-order on the Hex website right now. He's going to begin shipping the week of September 30th. There was also a Springtrap design that seemingly has gone unused, or at least it didn't launch with the launch of the Springtrap plushie. So I'm really hoping that design has just been delayed, much like the plushie, and hopefully we do get it because it was so incredible. But something else that is incredible is the brand new Hex Nightmare Own plushie. Daco showed this off for July 23rd's nine-year anniversary of FNAF 4, so shout out to FNAF 4 while we're at it. This plushie looks insane, and as you can see, he's even got some glow glow-in-the-dark eyes. Those are lit up by LED light bulbs in the eyes, and while that does mean there are no button eyes for this plushie, honestly, I'm taking these glow-in-the-dark eyes over the button eyes because this just looks insane. The plushie is set for an October release date and should be released alongside that Nightmare Own t-shirt and pin we also saw not too long ago. So I'd love to know what are your thoughts on the Nightmare Own plushie, and also while we're at it, what are your favorite memories with FNAF 4 as we're celebrating the nine-year anniversary? Moving on now to U2's, their withered plushies as well as the daycare attendant pin have officially been released. It's about dang time we got some more plushies of the Withered and Matronix. So we got the Hex plushies not too long ago, but now U2's is throwing their hat in the ring. And while we're on the topic of U2's plushies, it's not really FNAF news, but Chuck E. Cheese is getting a U2's plushie. That's going to be available on July 23rd, so it should be up by the time you're watching this video, though keep in mind it's only available for seven days. So if you want to pick up Charles Entertainment Cheese himself, I recommend doing so pretty quick. But now getting back to FNAF plushies, U2's just released some concept art for a Phantom Chica plushie, as well as some art of a watermelon variant of Phantom Chica, which is absolutely hilarious. People have been calling Phantom Chica a watermelon for years now. It's about time we finally acknowledge it with some official merchandise. But I'd love to know what are your thoughts so far on the FNAF 3 wave, because we also got concept art for figures of Phantom Chica and even Phantom Freddy. And another FNAF wave coming up pretty soon by YouTube's is the 10th anniversary wave. That is set to include Mr. Chipper and Tyke, his son from Chipper 
and Sons Lumber Company, with u actually releasing the box art for Chipper's figure. And an interesting thing to note is that this box is quite long compared to other u boxes, and we already know that figures of Chipper and Tyke are in the work, so maybe this is a two-pack with both of those characters. And then lastly for u we have one of the weirdest waves I think we've ever gotten from them, with brand new but also technically not new Dark Haunted figures being released exclusively for the UK retailer Menkind. Now, I'm gonna be honest in saying this is probably one of the laziest redesigns I've seen with FNAF merchandise recently. I've also heard these are like extremely limited, but they're also exclusive to the UK. So by far the weirdest FNAF wave we've gotten from YouTube's, especially the fact that it just shadow released out of nowhere. But now quickly, let's touch upon the Fazbear fanverse, starting off with Five Nights at Candies. You may have seen that a legacy demo of the spin-off title, FNAF Fur, has been released, and that was to celebrate the ninth anniversary of the FNAF series, so a lot of anniversaries happening right now. We played the full demo here on the channel, it was a great time, really fun, really funny as well. And then lastly for the fanverse, quickly touching upon my pop goes, a brand new achievement for the Steam version of the title, which is set to launch on August 1st, has been revealed, and you've got pop goes jamming out, just having a fun time with the music. And now moving on to Funko Fusion, because we have some amazing news in regards to how FNAF is being incorporated into that game. Because a few days ago, Kellen Goff took to Twitter to write, Hor, 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 hor. It is my honor to say I will be officially voicing the original Freddy Fazbear in Funko Fusion. So fantastically grateful, so much to say, but I'm going to save it for the panel at SDCC. Surprises are inbound. A special thank you to Scott Cawthon for entrusting me with the bear that started it all. It is an understatement to say I'm grateful and humbled to be appointed to the role I've dreamt of filling for eight years. Thank you so much, Scott. I'll give it my all. I think we all know and love Kellen around the parts, but just in case you don't know, Kellen is a fantastic voice actor who's had a lot of roles in the FNAF series. Those include Funtime Freddy, Molten Freddy, Fred Bear from Ultimate Custom Night, Glamrock Freddy, the daycare attendant Freddy Fazbear from the Freddy and Friends on Tour series, and then even Foxy in the official FNAF movie. So for Kellen to finally get the voice role of Freddy Fazbear himself, feels a bit overdue at this point. He went on to write, I'll say right now, that this version of Freddy is more exaggerated and cartoony to match the tone of Funko Fusion. Which is so fun, by the way. I can't wait for y'all to see what I've seen. Freddy's had many voices throughout the years. It seems like Scott just has never really found the right voice for Freddy. And if memory serves me correct, I believe that Kellen's voice role for Fredbear in UCN was originally for Freddy Fazbear. So the fact that he's now voicing Freddy in Funko Fusion, it seems like everything has come full circle. I'd be curious to know if from here on out when Freddy does have a voice if Kellen's going to be the voice actor But I'd love to know what are your thoughts on Kellen Goff being the official voice actor for Freddy Fazbear And now let's move on to Steel Wool Studios because coming up pretty soon on August the 4th They have a brand new announcement for us And it seems like they're starting to tease a little bit of what they have planned in the last FNAF news video We were able to figure out that Steel Wool would be attending this year's PAX West in Seattle And the other day they officially announced their involvement saying get ready to party with Freddy. Join us for Freddy's birthday bash at PAX West, happening August 29th to September 2nd. It's going to be a blast with party games, awesome giveaways from our FNAF friends, including Ruby, Scholastic, U2s, and Chimera, and lots of surprises in store. Meet new friends, play games, and collect exclusive goodies you won't want to miss. Don't miss out on the fun, mark your calendars, and we'll see you at PAX West. Now notably, PAX West is happening at the end of August and the FNAF anniversary, and of course, Steel Wool's announcement is at the beginning of the month. So whatever Steel Wool has to announce on the 4th of August, I feel like absolutely is going to be at PAX West. Now, last year for PAX West, there was a demo of Help Wanted 2, as well as a whole bunch of other props, including to regular Sauce's animatronic characters and costumes. And Sauce has said that he's working on some NDA stuff, which I'd assume gonna be some more attractions for PAX West. So all that leaves is the role of Steel Wool. What games are they going to be offering? Well, we already know from last year they can handle doing demos of VR games, so if they have a DLC of Help Wanted 2 cooking up, which it seems like they do, I feel like they would just be a perfect time to show it off. It's been long enough since the initial release of Help Wanted 2 that they could definitely have a demo of DLC ready. Plus, I feel like having a demo of something that's more of a linear game, a more opened installment of the franchise, like 
sequels to Ruin or Security Breach or a Carnival Fall Fest game. I feel like it might be hard to do demos of that at PAX West because you got to get people in and out to play test it. Plus, I'm also remembering that Stu had a demo of Help Wanted 1 at a PAX convention as well. So it seems like PAX is kind of their time to show off their VR games. But that is just my guess. I love to know what are you hoping to see for Steel's announcement on the 4th of August. And then actually right as I finished up editing today's video, we just got the breaking news that Funko has apparently lost their action figure and plush toy license for FNAF to Jazzwares. Back in May, we got the news that Jazzwares has acquired the master toy license for FNAF. And starting next year, they would be the main company creating action figures and plushies and other play sets for the franchise. When that news broke, reliable Funko Insider and news source scholar Joker reassured fans that Funko would not be done creating FNAF merchandise. However, also stating that eventually the figures and plushies from Funko would likely stop being made. And today they broke the news that unfortunately today they heard that Funko has lost the license to action figures and plushies for FNAF. With Jazzwares now seemingly having the exclusive license to make them from Funko, it's worth noting some people were concerned that companies like Hex and U2s weren't going to be allowed to make figures or plushies. That is not the case at all. Jazzwares is basically taking the license that Funko once had, so U2s, Hex, other companies, they're safe. And even unique Funko product lines like the Pop Figures and Mystery Minis and Funko Snaps, they should be safe as well. But it does seem like the Ruin wave that we just got is going to be the last action figure and plushy wave from Funko. And even the upcoming Funko Pops of the FNAF movie animatronics, those have been indefinitely delayed, most likely because of this licensing switch. This news especially sucks right after the Ruin wave, which I think a lot of fans agreed was really Funko making a comeback with such amazing detailed products. And the fact that that line is going to be the final figures and plushies we get from them is really disappointing. When the Ruin and 10th anniversary products were revealed, at the start of that video, I touched upon the Jazzwares controversy. It feels wrong saying that because it's so much more than just a controversy. So I'm going to leave that video link down below as well as a subreddit post detailing what's going on with Jazzwares. But the very basic rundown is multiple traces of the Jazzwares CEO financially backing Israel and their fight on Palestine. I highly recommend everyone go give that post a very detailed thorough read through, especially now seeing as Jazzwares is the main company making figures and plushies. I think it's very important everyone in the community knows if they buy those products, what that money is actually going towards. But I would really love to know what are your thoughts for the longest time people have memed about Funko losing the license. And now the day has finally come. Are you happy? Are you sad? What are your thoughts? I'd love to know. But that is going to do it for today's FNAF News video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.